Okay. Welcome, uh, my beautiful people. Uh, first off, I am Tom, and I'm joined here right now at the moment with Hannah and Jamie and Devin. Um, such a joy and pleasure to have you guys here. Um, this is something I've been super excited about since the moment I wanted to, to run this workshop. And I was just telling the girls that uh, I've run workshops like this that were like sometimes two, sometimes three times the length of this one. Um, and there was just so much that I wanted to like introduce and, and spew out. And I'm such a bad, um, I'm so bad with that because even people who know my writing, like I will go on for essays to <laughs> illustrate a single point. So um, this was fun to put together. Uh, today, I really just kind of wanted to drop the key core essentials of breathing, you know, just like the basic foundation. So you really have a sense so of, of, of what the gases are doing, what the biochemistry is doing, what the brain waves and every, everything else is doing. Um, and that way, whenever you go and engage in a different breathing practice, or you go to a yoga class, or you go and engage an actual workshop that is teaching a very specific style of breath work, um, whether that be something like one palm or holotropic breathing, um, or you name it, you will have a sense of actually what's going on and why they're using a certain cadence or time or, you know, the, the intensity of the breath, let's say. Uh, so that's really the goal of today. And I really want to help you guys also tie this into how this affects the nervous system. And for those of you who are watching the replay, uh, or currently on a call, if you aren't already part of that particular group on guide me, please join them because this is honestly like a snippet of, of what it really means to regulate your nervous system and the things you can do to regulate your nervous system. And we are only talking about breath work here, but there's so much and so many different tools and practices. So I don't wanna get too deep into the weeds. I'm just gonna give you a quick little brief micro intro about me, who I am, and then we're just gonna dive right into it. So my name is Tom. I am a guide on Guidely. I have a business that I founded uh, just this past year, which was really sort of the culmination of the past 10, 12 years of the work I was doing. Uh, I just transitioned out of running a neurofeedback business where we were essentially measuring people's brain waves and like training those brain waves and down through ranges. So I really kind of spent the past five years diving deep into neuroscience and just trying to understand and study the mind. Uh, but the previous six years or so, I was very invested in like learning everything I could about the body. And you know, I, I started with just basic like exercise science and things like that, anatomy and physiology. And then that turned into really doing a deep dive into nutrition, holistic, integrative and Ayurvedic nutrition. I wanted to get a good, well-rounded uh, understanding of those things. Not because I thought I would be doing this for other people, mind you. This was truly something that I was personally invested in because it really was me trying to heal a lifetime of personal abuse, you know, and um, I was trying to heal so many childhood wounds and addictive tendencies and self-sabotage and low self-esteem. Um, you can go down a list like anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, like I was there at some point or another. And for me, like personal growth, spiritual growth, like that was my, that was my saving grace because I probably wouldn't be here today if not for those different things that I had to like learn and work on for myself. And at my worst, I weighed about 118 pounds. Like my body burnt out, like my muscles tore themselves down, my liver, my kidneys were shot. So I was in a deep, dark place. Like there were days I could not physically lift myself out of bed. So I had to rebuild essentially from that place. And this past year, I started my company, NeuroArchitect, with the sole focus really of helping people both create more better self-regulation, nervous system regulation, emotional balance, because that is really what kind of ties it all together. You know, um, whether you're having GI issues, whether you're having any other kind of problems, you know, mental, emotional, physical, high rates of inflammation, chronic health issues, regulate the nervous system. You're going to find all those different areas and dimensions of your life improve. And breath work for me is one of the absolute best tools that you can apply in your life on a day-to-day -day that really helps train that nervous system and help you better regulate. So today we are gonna dive into 
a little bit of that. And we are going to round things out with a breathing ses session. <laughs> session. Um, so I'm going to encourage you guys right now to think ahead and, you know, make sure you're somewhere where you can do that, you know, and ideally I love to encourage people to do this lying down if they can, but if they don't have that opportunity to do so right now, you know, just make sure you're seated somewhere where, you know, there's a nice back support <laughs> um, because it will be intense breathing. So I just want to make sure you're nice and steady and uh, in a good spot. Okay. So breath work. Um, Guys, raise of hands, who here thinks they actually know how to breathe? I'm just curious. Like actually knows how to breathe. Okay, one, two, somewhat, somewhat. <laughs> um, and it's a fun question to ask, right? Because it's like, what do you mean know how to breathe? It just happens, right? And, you know, we kind of come out of the womb and it's the very first thing we do is actually take a breath, right? We inhale, we inspire, right? And of course, it's the last thing we do when we exhale. Spire. Now you have a sense for where that word came from, right? Because spiration, um, spirit from the Latin spirit actually means spirit, uh, which I find so poetic because, you know, when you're inspired, you're taking in the spirit. So it's almost like you're taking in something from outside of you, you know, like the muse is just sitting down and you're inspired to create this piece of work, you know, this art, this music or whatever it is. And we are born with this capacity to breathe, but we are not taught how to actually use it. And our modern day lifestyle makes it extremely difficult to actually do that effectively. So what triggers or what causes, and I'm actually gonna present this to the group. I'm just really curious if anyone has an answer for me. What makes your body want to breathe? So let's forget about like just conscious breathing, right? But like what triggers that autonomic response for breath? Like what makes you want to take an inhale? Anyone? A buildup of CO2. Hmm? A buildup of CO2. Oh my God, Hannah. Awesome. Yes, it is actually all about the CO2. Um, CO2 is the primary um, gas that regulates our desire to breathe. Uh, so when CO2 levels get a little too high, in the body, it triggers a natural response for us to want to take an inhale, right? And then we exhale. So let's talk about that for a quick second. CO2, oxygen, and then one other fun gas, uh, nitric oxide. So CO2 is, mind you, we breathe because we want to regulate a lot of different things inside the body, which includes our alkalinity and our acidity, right? And CO2 is, an acidic gas, right? But it's not a waste gas, it's not a waste product. And in fact, we need, a, we, we need CO2 in the body in order for us to utilize oxygen. So now let's talk about that real quick. And this is the Bohr effect in the body, right? So having adequate amounts of CO2 actually allows the red blood cells to release oxygen into your different glands and organs and tissues right? If you don't have enough CO2 in the body, your body, even if though it's 98% saturated with oxygen at all times, you can't extract it. You can't use it, right? But when CO2, when acidity becomes too high in the body, when CO2 levels rise too high in the body, it naturally triggers a desire to breathe. Okay. So we have that. So CO2 not being a waste gas. I just said that a second ago. What does CO2 actually do in the body? Uh, for one, it's a vasodilator. It can actually dilate your blood vessels, okay? That's very important. Believe it or not, it's also a muscle relaxant. So making sure you have adequate amounts of CO2 in the body allows the body to relax. Now, let's think about this for a second. If we are stressed, if we're anxious, very often you hear people telling you, well, you're probably breathing light, shallow, fast, right? Historically, from an evolutionary standpoint, in what situations would we ever be breathing a lot? Huffing and puffing and breathing a lot. More often than not, it's a state of fight or flight. You know, we're running away from a predator or we're fighting for our lives, right? So the body associates that with a state of stress. Now, we want adequate levels of CO2, having not enough CO2, having too much CO2 
can trigger both those states. Panic disorders, anxiety, um, even addiction, uh, depression, and um, schizophrenic symptoms even can be triggered by inadequate levels of carbon dioxide in the body. Um, but when we have adequate levels of CO2, again, the muscles in the body start to relax. We're able to downregulate a little bit, right? But if we are breathing too often, we do have very hectic and stressful lifestyles. We're going to be breathing too much and off-gassing too much of that CO2. So what happens? Our muscles start to constrict. They start to tense up. Okay. Now, I want you guys to see what I look like when my muscles start to tense up and constrict. We develop this forward head posture. We cave in. What does this tell the body? I'm not safe. Right? Now, and now it's creating this feedback loop because now the body being in this position, in this fetal position, you're indicating to the brain and your nervous system, we're not in a safe place. What does that do? It keeps us chronically stuck in this state of hyper arousal, right? So already we see just with this one gas, how playing with it can actually create these different states inside of us. Now, of course, we all know we need oxygen, right? Uh, but now we can also see that we need adequate levels of carbon dioxide in order to utilize the oxygen that's already in the blood. We need oxygen because it's going to actually help us create more antioxidants. Therefore, we have fewer free radicals floating around, destroying the body, right? Lowers inflammation in the body. Inflammation really sort of being at the root of a lot of chronic health issues that we have. So oxygen is necessary. CO2 is absolutely necessary. Okay, great. Let's talk about nitric oxide for a quick second, okay? Nitric oxide is produced when we inhale. It's produced specifically when we inhale through the nose. Why is nitric oxide so important? Well, for one, it's an antiviral molecule. It's actually one of the most potent antiviral molecules and coming off the past two years, I think we can really sort of appreciate why that could be so important, learning how to inhale only through the nose and breathe only through the nose, why that's so key and why that's so important for our immune defense. Nitric oxide is also vasodilating, right? Dilates those blood vessels, better nutrient distribution, better blood flow, better oxygenation of the body, right? For those of you familiar with that favorite red, uh, not red pill, blue pill, Viagra, right? What does Viagra actually do? It simply helps the body produce nitric oxide to allow better blood flow, right? So now we're talking about libido and sexual function, so your organs, right? So nitric oxide is another key molecule that we wanna talk about, that we wanna discuss in this and in future workshops and videos and, and courses and everything else that we're gonna be doing here. So I just want you to have a very basic sense of what nitric oxide can potentially do for us in the body, okay? now. Lost that train of thought for a quick second. Okay, there we go. <laughs> CO2, oxygen, and nitric oxide. Now, we want to be able to play with these different things, right? But we have to really, truly see how our lifestyles either create or make it worse for us to be able to breathe correctly and regulate our breathing, right? Because I want you to think about how acidic our lifestyles are 90% of Americans, over 90% of Americans are overly acidic, which means what? If we are overly acidic, you know what the body's going to start to do? It's going to start to breathe more because it's trying to off gas a lot of that carbon dioxide, right? That's the best way that it knows how to alkalize itself. But what happens when we off gas too much CO2? Now you guys know that we are also not oxygenating the body properly, which creates all these other downward spiral effects, whether that be with our mood, our nervous system, just our overall physical health because of that rise in inflammation, right? So it really starts to create this like self-perpetuating downward spiral. Now, if we also recognize the importance of what I just mentioned a second ago, nose breathing, mouth breathing, right? When we're stressed, when we're anxious, we're breathing more with our mouths. We are off-gassing a lot more CO2 than we should be, right? So now we are actually telling the body, well, 
we need to lower our CO2 threshold, right? And I, I'm, I'm gonna like really try to break this part down because just because sometimes even in my mind when I talk about it, it, it just gets jumbly. But if your body is constantly off-gassing CO2 and it's not getting oxygen, what it, what it wants to do instead to make sure that it can extract that oxygen is lower the threshold necessary for CO2 in a body to create a desire to breathe. Like we said at the very beginning, like Hannah pointed out, in order for the body to want to breathe, there has to be a level of CO2 that's getting hit, right? The moment we hit that threshold, body wants to take oxygen in. But if we're constantly off-gassing all that CO2 because of our acidic and stressful lifestyles, we don't have enough CO2. Now the body naturally lowers its threshold. So that way it can hit that threshold, trigger a desire to inhale. But as you can see, that threshold just keeps getting lower and lower, which means now it takes less and less CO2 in the body, which makes things worse and worse and worse and worse because now we're truly CO2 deficient. Does that make sense? Raise of hands. I know that was just like a lot, but I really hope that makes sense. Um, so we have to actually intentionally raise our levels of CO2 and our CO2 tolerance, okay? Which is actually some of what today's breath work will be engaging in and what we, we will be intentionally doing. So we covered CO2, we covered a little bit of oxygen, we covered a little bit of uh, nitric oxide. And now I wanna talk about holding our breath and breath holes because that will also be a component today in the breathing that we're gonna do. Why are breath holds important? And why do we want to actually intentionally start to create a desire, a hunger for air? If we hold our breath for an extended period of time, we're actually going to allow the body to naturally build up CO2, right? And so as you go and you leave today, what I want you to start to do is be very intentional about creating hunger for air. And in fact, I'll, I'll give you a couple practices and I'll even actually write some out that I'll post in the nervous system regulation group, like actual breathing practices that you guys can do and start to implement on a day to day uh, to essentially allow the body to start to build up its CO2 threshold, build up the tolerance for CO2 as well in the body. Because the better we get at maintaining and navigating acidic states, that's going to also translate into better uh, athletic performance, guys. So I want you guys to think about how that lactic acid builds up and you get so tired and fatigued. That's actually what shuts your nervous system down. It's the buildup of the acid in the body. But what if your body can tolerate higher levels of added acid? You can go longer. You can perform better. Right. And it's not just physical performance, but this really translated translates into overall better nervous system regulation, mental and emotional performance, focus, things like that. So we are going to create intentional states of air hunger. I want you, for example, when you're walking today, just breathe normally. And then on the exhale, you're going to hold your breath on the exhale. And then you're just going to take five to 10 paces and then resume breathing regularly for 10 seconds. And then again, exhale, walk five to 10 paces. And you're creating these brief periods of CO2 buildup and you're creating air hunger in the body. And we're gonna do this practice now together as well. But before we do it, I want everyone to just like whip out their phone or just like put a timer on their screen. And we're gonna just time the seconds that we can hold our breath before we get that first absolute desire, initial urge to breathe. And what you're gonna do is you're not gonna breathe extra right now. I just want you to continue breathing normally, okay? You're gonna inhale and exhale normally. And the goal here, of course, when I tell you to start holding your breath, you're not trying to hold your breath for as long as you can. You are waiting for that very first initial desire to take a breath. And that can sometimes even present itself as like a muscle constriction, a light twitch. Um, but lean into that and just don't push it. I don't want you to hold your breath for as long as you can. You're just going to try to do so until you get the first actual desire, initial desire to take a breath. So keep breathing normally. We're going to do this in about two breaths. And then you're going to simply exhale. And then set that timer and click go. And just time yourself how many seconds 
you can go before getting that very first initial desire to take a breath. And just like chime in real quick and tell me what were some of your scores? What were some of your numbers? Right around 30 seconds. 30 or 13? 30, three zero. Three zero, okay. Nice. Three seconds. Mine was 11. 11, okay. Mine was 17. 17, okay. So Devin, um, either you are a pro breather. <laughs> Maybe that was too long. <laughs> <laughs> or um or you resisted some of those in the shores and that's okay yeah um i probably did but and, and that was kind of the the goal here it's just don't try to push it don't try to, like really just very honestly try to see but if it's 30 kudos to you like that's phenomenal i love that like me right now i'm probably at like a 25 to 28 depending on the day um but 29 seconds paula fabulous i love that although you don't support proud of me with that. I know you, I know you do that. <laughs> I know you do a lot of it. Um, but what this is, is actually something that uh, Patrick McCallan uh, of the Oxygen Advantage um, also came out with another great book. I have it somewhere actually probably in my, um, my bookshelf in my room called The Breathing Cure, which I highly suggest and recommend to everyone because he does actually offer a lot of brilliant like individual practices uh, for diabetes for you know, panic attacks for this and that. And I did just say diabetes, yes, because at the end of the day, when we learn to regulate our nervous system, what we're also uh, creating is A, what we just said, a more alkaline state, a less acidic state. And what we're also creating is a very healthy environment for a healthy endocrine system. So all our um, glands and our hormones are operating at a far better uh, efficiency. But what he popularized was what's called the Bolt test, the blood oxygen level test. And what you guys just proved, and actually what, what, what your numbers are, are actually very average, right? Most people will tend to fall in that 10 to 20 second range. And a healthy range to be in or to try to work towards, you know, just to make sure that everything is working probably is to want to be in the 20s, right? And if you're like a high performer, high level athlete, like these guys, they want to push themselves to be in the thirties and forties. Right. But the goal here is to recognize that, okay, if this is where my score is at, I definitely need to actually increase my ability to tolerate CO2 and increase my levels of CO2. Uh, because what we're showing here is that it doesn't, your body has a low CO2 threshold, right? So the moment that enough CO2 built up, you want to take a breath in. But as we just kind of discussed a little moment ago, you want those CO2 thresholds to be slightly higher, right? And that way you can have enough CO2 to be able to effectively utilize the oxygen in the body. Because uh, the body has honestly like 98% saturation of oxygen um, at all times. We don't need to be breathing that much. And in fact, eventually what we want to do is work up to breathing about six breaths per minute, right? We take about on average, let's say 25,000 breaths a day. Um, and that body, as you're breathing, you're also massaging your different organs and all these different things. So it actually really helps with the digestion, aside from just like having a healthy nervous system, which contributes to a healthy digestive system and all those other things. You're also just massaging those organs as you're breathing. You know, it's like a little internal uh, massage that you get, but it's the six breath per minute. That's like the sweet spot. Um, but while you're getting started, and let's say you are in that lower range of let's say 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you can start by working with 10 breaths. But so just becoming conscious of how much you're breathing uh, on a minute to minute basis, you know, and just like learning how to slow it down because now we can see that over breathing actually contributes to less oxygen. And I hope that, you know, kind of talking a little bit about the gases and how that works, how that actually leads to that. So we want to actually start to slow our breathing. 
which also contributes to a more regulated nervous system, a more uh, coherent, let's say, heart rhythm, brainwave rhythm, and things like that. So for this reason, again, breath work is just so absolutely essential uh, for really being able to just like self-regulate everything, how we're feeling, what we're doing. Uh, but are there times where we want to actually breathe faster? Yes. And that's what we're going to do today uh, because partly breathing fast activates your sympathetic nervous system. Now, why would we want to actually intentionally activate the sympathetic fight or flight nervous system? Mm -hmm. A, it actually increases our ability to focus temporarily, right? Because we get this flood of adrenaline and cortisol. So if you're about to, let's say, go out and about to actually go and you're an athlete and you're about to start the game, you want to be in a more alert, hyper aroused state, right? And again, the key here is that we're doing this with intention because if there was a lion chasing me right now and I'm running away, that's a very different kind of stress, right? That's externally induced. We want to self-induce this, right? And when we do so, we actually help the body also acclimate to higher levels of stress. So by intentionally engaging in the kind of breath work we're about to do, uh, we are essentially doing this uh, cyclic hyperventilation, right? Because we're going to be breathing so fast, we are hyperventilating. We are off-gassing a lot of CO2. We are actually creating a drop in oxygen in the body and it creates the state of stress. But because we're present and we're aware and we're self-inducing it, we are able to then acclimate to that and be ready to then translate that into our day-to-day, -day, right? Also doing stuff like this actually can help us almost reset the nervous system sometimes. And right now they did this study with mice, which they showed that like, these mice were snapping out of anxiety and depression by simply inducing this uh, state of stress, this heightened level of stress in very small breath spurts, right? So it's not extended, it's not chronic. It's just a small little nugget of stress. Um, not that we don't have enough stress in our lives, but this is different. And um, so there's that. But then we're gonna wind down after we do the breathing. Uh, with some coherence breathing. And it's gonna be a nice count of five seconds in, five seconds out. And I wanna make a point here that, before I make that point, let's just recap real quick what we just talked about, um, cause I don't want this to be lost on you. The importance of nose over mouth breathing. Um, cause we didn't do die too deep into it. And sometimes I spent like good solid half hour talking about the difference between these two, but breathing with the nose, um, smaller airways, right? Believe it or not, we get 50% more oxygen intake by breathing with the nose versus breathing with the mouth. Uh, what happens when we're growing up as children? If we are not consciously, intentionally being told to breathe with the nose, uh, the tongue doesn't touch the roof of the mouth, right? Because like try to have the tongue touch the roof of the mouth when your mouth is open and breathing. What happens when the tongue doesn't do that is it doesn't exert pressure in the mouth and then your jaws and your actual uh, face doesn't form properly and creates smaller airways in the nose. And then you are actually almost like conditioned to breathe with your mouth because now you don't really have the actual physical apparatus correctly built for proper breathing. And uh, back in the, like the 17 or 1800s, there was this artist that traveled all over the States and he would visit different tribes and he noticed, he actually documented this because he saw that all the mothers that were nursing their young, whenever they were holding their young uh, and the babies started to breathe with their mouths, mom would close it up because they knew like this was just like intuitively known throughout cultures, throughout tribes, especially like if you look at the different pranayama traditions in India, like they just knew the value of creating, um, you know, a healthy body through making sure people were engaging in nasal breathing. Uh, but again, there's also just the simple fact that we are getting so much more oxygen. That way, when we breathe with our mouth, our mouth becomes dry, which then leads to cavities because now we don't have the saliva and the acidity necessary to, uh, we don't have like the saliva or the internal environment to actually fight those cavities off. Uh, so there's so many other things that do happen when we start to um, breathe with our mouths versus breathing with our nose the way we are meant to do. Uh, and so I didn't want that to go <laughs> um, unsaid during this very specific, because this is something I do want you to just be more conscious and more aware of, especially when you're engaged in doing what I'm doing, just talking a lot. 
you are breathing a lot with your mouth, right? So people who are teachers, people who are in professions that require them to engage a lot with talking, something you might notice. Also, if you're sleeping, my girlfriend's going to hate me for saying this, but if you're sleeping with your mouth open, you are going to snore. Um, and for those of you who are familiar, there is um, something you can purchase. In fact, it's the surgical mouth tape that you can place over your lips at night to actually force you to start to breathe with the nose. Um, if you ever notice that you wake up in the morning groggy and low energy, you are breathing with the mouth the entire night, which actually caused a lack of oxygen to be delivered to your brain. So you weren't resting and you weren't actually uh, dipping into those deeper stages of sleep. So that's just inside. Um, I know I'm talking a lot today. I'm dumping a lot on you. This is not even like a fraction of what I really would have liked to, but I really want to just dive into the breath work while we still have some time. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to engage in some very intentional cyclic hyperventilation. We're going to be, yes, hyperventilating, blowing off a lot of CO2. I know it's the exact opposite of what we just kind of talked about, but what we just talked about is what I want you to do on your day to day. Every single moment, every single second that we are not engaged in what we're about to do. Okay. Uh, this is uh, similar to Wim Hof breath work for those of you guys who are familiar with it. Uh, with some differences and some caveats, I made some modifications with it. So what it's going to entail is essentially deep inhales into the belly, like really filling up the belly, uh, which is also another thing that we're going to cover in a future uh, conversation. This is like the difference between chest breathing, belly breathing, using diaphragm, so many things. My mind goes 100 miles an hour, but we're going to engage in some deep breathing, we're going to breathe into the belly, filling up the belly, then we're going to drive that breath up into the chest, bring it all the way up, and then it's going to be a soft, gentle release, right? But noting here that our inhale is longer than the exhale, okay? And for those of you who ever want to reverse that and be able to downregulate and calm yourselves, you're always doing what? You're extending your exhale. That activates more of the parasympathetic rest and digest system. When we inhale and we extend the inhale, we're activating more of the sympathetic, okay? So we're gonna deep long inhale into the belly, into the chest. I'm gonna say let go and you're just gonna release and let go, okay? So it's almost a count of three seconds in, one second out, right? So there's always some air still left behind. You're not fully blowing it all out. And we're gonna do this for about 30 to 40 breaths. At that last breath, I'm going to tell you to let go and you're going to exhale and you're going to hold your breath here for as long as you can. Now, again, going back to the importance of breath holds, it's not just the allowing the CO2 to build back up and things like that. When you engage in breath holds, you're also doing two other things. A, it allows the body to release stem cells and stem cells, we know, can actually go to different parts of the body and do what those different organs and tissues and glands need them to do and become and transform into, uh, which is very healing for the body. Uh, what it also does is tell us the kidneys, hey, produce more EPO. Uh, and that EPO will tell the body to produce more red blood cells. You are, by holding your breath, creating more blood cells in the body, which do what? Store oxygen. Now you have more oxygen to use in the body. So I hope you can see the benefit in just really creating air hunger, engaging breath hold. So we're going to hold our breath on that last exhale. Don't worry, I'm going to coach you through it. Um, you're going to hold your breath for as long as you can. And when you can no longer hold your breath, what you're going to do is you're going to take a nice long sip in, exhale again, and continue holding your breath. And we're going to do that twice. But of course, everyone's going to be a little different, so I'm telling you this now. But you're going to take that quick sip, exhale, and you're going to continue to hold. Do that twice. After which, you're going to take a deep, long inhale. And you're gonna hold at the top of that inhale for an additional 15 seconds. So you're just gonna hold at the top of the inhale and then resume that same pattern of breathing. Three second in, one second out. For those of you who are pregnant, nursing, or who have had a history of very severe panic and anxiety attacks, what I'd rather you guys do is instead forgo the breath holds and you are just going to continually maintain a rhythm of four second inhale, two second exhale. You're doing a lot of the similar things we're talking about, but it's a lot gentler on the nervous system. Okay, so four second inhale, two second exhale. Everyone else, you're gonna continue that. We're gonna do about three rounds together, after which we are going to 
move into just some light coherence breathing where you're going to breathe in and out for a count of five, five seconds in, five seconds out. I'm going to lead you through that. I'm going to wrap things up. We got about 20 minutes, which is perfect. I want you guys to find a comfortable position where you can either lay down on your back. Um, I will make this note for some of you because you may experience it. When we're off-gassing so much CO2, your blood vessels will constrict a little bit. You may notice yourselves feeling a little cold. Some of you may notice tingling sensations or even muscle twitches, right? Again, CO2 is a muscle relaxant. If you don't have enough of it, you might notice some muscle tensing or some muscle twitching. That's okay. That's also normal. Uh, even ringing in the ears might happen. Others of you may notice colors. If you do notice colors with your eyes closed, that's often indicating that your right and left brain are kind of sinking up, which is great. So just throwing that out there as well. Those are just sensations you may experience. But of course, if it becomes too intense, just slow it down a bit. Okay. I'm actually going to get some music going. Right now, you're just going to have your eyes closed and you can start to inhale, gently filling up the belly, driving that breath up into your chest, all the way up to the top of the head, and then release, let it go. Pull in, into the belly, into the chest, all the way up to the top of the head, and let it go. Belly, chest, head, chest, head, and let it go, belly, chest, head, and let it go, just continue to breathe in that same pattern, it's a nice three second inhale, and exhale, and in this case where you can breathe in through the nose, and you're more than welcome to breathe out with the mouth this time, just continue to breathe, three seconds in, and just letting go. And as you let go, you're just softening the body, you're relaxing, you're releasing. Again, inhale and release, let it go. Inhale and release, let it go. Just stay with that rhythm, allow it to just flow like a wave in and out. chest, head, and let it go, belly, chest, head, and release, belly, chest, head, and release, belly, chest, head, and let it go, continue to breathe, we're going to speed these up a tiny little bit, fully in, let it go, 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 fully in, and let it go, fully in, let it go, three more, one, two, last one, fully in, and then you're going to exhale, and you're going to hold on this exhale for as long as you you can. This time, yes, you're pushing yourself to hold your breath for as long as you can in this spot, in this state. Holding here for as long as you can and just tuning into all the somatic and physical sensations you're currently experiencing and feeling. tingling sensations, any coolness, any cold in the body. When you can no longer hold your breath again, take that quick sip in, exhale, and then continue to hold. And then after that, when you can't hold anymore, again, one quick more sip in, exhale, and continue to hold. After 
after which you're gonna take a nice deep long inhale in and then you're gonna hold at the top of that inhale for an additional 15 seconds. Ready, I want you guys to start to resume breathing. Deep, nice, long inhales into the belly, expanding the belly in all directions, all directions, front, back, side to side, chest, head, and let it go. Belly, chest, head, and let it go. Fully in. And release, let it go. If something comes up for you, emotions, thoughts, memories, just continue to breathe through them, with them. Breathing in this way, it can trigger a lot, it can release a lot. It's a great way to sometimes just release stored emotions, stored trauma, allow the body, allow the nervous system, the conscious mind to process them. Just continue to breathe fully in. And letting it all go, fully in. And let it go, fully in. And let it go, fully in. And release, let it go, fully in. And let it go, belly, chest, head, all the way up. And let it go, release, fully in. And release, fully in. Release, fully in. Release, and just continue to breathe in that way. Really just being present with the experience, being present with the sensations, being present with whatever is surfacing for you. Fully in. Let it go, speed it up a little bit, fully in. Let it go, 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 fully in. Three, two, last one, fully in. Exhale and hold. Hold here on this exhale for as long as you can. Present with the body, be present with the sensations. Even if you notice a slight ringing, even if you notice muscles tensing up, twitching, constricting, there's tingling going on, just be present with all of it. Holding here for as long as you can, and then when you can no longer hold your breath, you just take a nice quick sip in. Pause and then exhale and continue to hold. And we can no longer hold. Again, quick sip in. Exhale. And then when you can no longer hold your breath, you're going to take a deep, long inhale and filling up the belly, filling up the chest, bringing it all the way up. And hold at the top of that inhale for an additional 15 seconds. I want you to start to breathe in at a nice, smooth, gentle pace. So we're gonna breathe in and out for a count of five. Five seconds in, five seconds out. And you're breathing into the belly primarily. But I want you to actually visualize that breath flowing into the center of the chest. And out the center of the chest. Just visualizing that you're breathing in and out with the heart. Just continue to breathe. 
smooth five seconds in. Five seconds out. Continue to breathe in a very smooth, gentle way now. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. In, two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, five. In, two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, five. In, two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four. Take a while, imagining, visualizing that breath flowing into and out from the center of the chest. Where your heart sits. As your thoughts start to slip away, just bring them back. Do that breathing. All the physical sensations that you're going through right now, just staying present with all of them. Very slowly, very gently. Just gonna rub your hands together. Gonna wiggle your toes a bit. Feel a call to it. Stretch. Arms over head, side to side. You can twist the body around a little bit. Sometimes it even helps just kind of pat yourself down physically just to kind of get rounded back into the physical body. Take things off. Okay. Jamie, Anna, how are we doing? Paula Love, how are you? Hi, Tom. Hey. <laughs> Hi, everybody. That was great. I was lying down. <laughs> um, I just want to thank you for um, sharing your knowledge, your in-depth expertise on breathing. Um, I, I experience this a lot because there's a lot of... Um, practices within pranayama within kundalini yoga that i do but yeah. you really helped put some pieces of the puzzle together for me to understand the science behind it so now i get you know how it works i experience yeah. how it works but now i really loved um everything you taught us today really fantastic um lesson and the breath work as always was fantastic too um it really kind of brought me into my body um 
I noticed at the end, I didn't want to breathe anymore. <laughs> that's actually a really good point. Um, that's beautiful, actually. Uh, it, it, that, it's interesting because the less we breathe, the longer we live. Yes. Uh, and it's true. And, you know, the Chinese, the Taoists, they would often tell you, like, breathe very light, breathe very slow. So again, the deep breathing, but very slow, very gentle, very light, you know, um, fewer breaths. And also slows the uh, metabolism and, and and the quickening quickening of the aging process, uh, yeah. which is very cool. But um, yeah, I love yeah. that it actually got you that deep and calm and yeah. still. Totally, and you know, in the yogi in the yogi tradition, we say that um, we have a one minute breath that we cultivate. So it's a practice to get to one breath per minute because the the wisdom is that we come into life with a certain amount of breath that's pre-originated, pre I guess. And so the slower you breathe, the longer your life will be. <laughs> so that also kind of lines up. And, and I loved when you talked about that too. Um, yeah, and, and for somebody like me who has a very quick mind and a quick digestive system, um, I don't process always, you know, I am integrate or that's what I've learned about myself that it, I really get to pay attention to that. The breath work is just life changing so thank you again really brilliant yeah, um, no, thank, session. You. <laughs> thank you for sharing that it's great to see everybody <laughs> and jamie how about you guys how was it it was great it, you know it's always um it's always a really special experience to be so present with body sensations. You know, there's you know, so much of the day is spent just, you know, in my mind, task oriented. Um, so having, having the space and the guidance um, to, you know, like this is my job for the last hour is to really get into my body, which is just the coolest thing ever. Um, I experienced, I did get really cold. I did have some, um, like, I, I like to think that shaking is like just somatic release. Um, yes. yeah. So I had some of that towards the end. Um, and it just, you know, every time so breath work is one on the list of things that I know I should do every day. Right. Um, and every time I do it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is, the best thing ever. There's like, there's an 11 minute Wim Hof YouTube video that just blows my mind every time I do it. Um, and so it's like, okay, but now I just need like a Tom Jasinski YouTube video or actually even better within the guided community, 11 minute practice. That's my request. <laughs> so I can do this more regularly. <laughs> there's something I've been thinking about. I mean, I'm happy to make a video for it, but just to have like a weekly or even like a bi-weekly, um, it's just like actual guided yeah. uh, work because I know this for myself too. It's different when I do it on my own and it's different when I actually have someone else to sort of almost take over the reins. So I don't even have to think about mm -hmm. it. I just like follow the instruction and it really helps me also get out of my own mind. Yeah. Um, and be present with the practice itself, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, so it does make a tremendous difference. Um, so I love that. I can I, upload uh, MP3s or MP4s if you prefer video. <laughs> No, whatever works. I'm happy to. Awesome. Thank you. And Jamie, how about you? Is there anything you wanted to share or? Yeah, I, I thought that was, I thought that was beautifully done. I really enjoyed the combination of the education and then um, being able to practice um, some of those techniques. I think that was really, really well put together and clearly really thought out. Um, so thank you for, for sharing the last hour with me. Um, I have a little bit of a cold, so I struggle. I was struggling a little bit uh -huh. um, with some of it, admittedly. Um, but yeah, I, I think being able to take some of this and immediately, you know, integrate it with with the day to day will be super helpful. Super helpful for me, and and will be for everybody that we get to share this with. Yeah. So again, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing and spending the time the past hour with me. Um, one thing I'll note on the cold actually is um, by doing the practice, uh, that boost of adrenaline and cortisol that you get when you, your body upregulates in that way, it is actually very anti-inflammatory. Um, so believe it or not, it can really help increase um, your immune defenses temporarily. And again, when you breathe with the nose specifically, you also mm -hmm. get that 
antiviral and you know all those immune boosting benefits of the nitric oxide too yeah uh, that's why i love so uh that that you actually took part in this even more so now <laughs> yeah i appreciate that i was thinking about that in, in the first half of the session and when we, you were talking about mouth breathing i was like oh well that's been me the last two nights for sure so <laughs> Yeah. Um, and if you can test it, I'm happy to show you a practice. Um, and I can actually make a video about this too, like an actual breathing practice that just kind of almost helps decongest the nose. Um, oh. you're pretty much just sitting there holding the nose for a little bit and you kind of rock back and forth and you create a very um, large uh, hunger for air. And you do a few rounds of that and really just decongests the nose. So I'm happy to oh. um, shoot that over. I'll post that it. Would be, yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. Cool. Well, awesome, everyone. Um, honestly, I covered a fraction of what I truly wanted to, <laughs> um, but that's just the nature of things. Um, there will be many more to come. Uh, with that, I cannot thank you all enough for actually hopping on live uh, and for everyone watching the replay. Um, join the nervous system regulation group because this is Honestly, just one of the things I talk about, uh, there's so many things that do go into creating a very healthy and balanced nervous system, which include things like sleep and proper nutrition and all of these other different things that we don't necessarily think contribute, but do. So I will leave you all with that. I'm gonna wish you all an incredible rest of your day, rest of your week, whenever you're watching this. Um, and much love, talk soon. Thanks, Thank Tom. you so much. Bye everybody. Good day. Bye. Bye. Thank you.